I'm going to show you how to do top-down 2D movement and animation using an animation player and animation tree. Create a new scene, give it a kinematic body 2D, call it player, save it, and give it a sprite, pass it your sprite sheet, I'll include this one in the description. It's got 48 frames and I'll give it a collision shape 2D as well, give it a rectangle, And I'm just going to move this sprite in the center and hit play. Okay, as of right now, there's no movement yet, and you can see my movements in the corner here. So let's add some movement. So create a new script, go physics process, give it a empty vector to start, and if we press right, then we'll increase this input vector by one, if we press left, we'll decrease it by one, and do the same for up and down. Okay, create a variable for speed, and move and slide by velocity by speed, and then I'm also just going to update the input vector on the screen. This is obviously not something that you would do. So we can see it over here. Okay, so we have some movement and you can see the input vector, but one of the problems is that if you go at an angle, you move a little bit faster. So in order to fix that, just normalize the vector like that. And that should fix it. Okay. So we have, uh, we have some movement, but we don't have any animation. So let's get some animations going. So add animation player, create a new animation, idle down, let's say. I'll just do one of these and then I'll fast forward. So point eight, looping, add track, property, sprite, frame. And for idle down, it's just the first frames that I'm going to record and hit play and you can see it right there. You're basically going to want to do the same for all your idle and walking animations by hitting new and to speed that along I'm just going to grab it from another scene over here and this has all the animations so left, right, etc and walking. Okay so we have some animations ready to go, but we also want to make sure that we play them in the right direction. So in order to help with the direction of the sprite, I'm going to add an animation tree. So the animation tree is going to be a node state machine. I'm going to assign it the animation player in our scene, set it to active, and right click, click add blend space 2D. I'm going to rename this to idle, and I'm going to click this button so that it starts in that state. I'm going to hit um, the pencil for editing and get this grid. So this grid is a grid from minus one to one with a y-axis and an x-axis. And this grid is going to help us map the input vector from the directions that we're pressing into an animation. So these values are essentially going to get plotted onto this grid. So let's start by creating the animation grid for the animation tree. So click add points left click this side, click idle left, this is going to be idle right, this is going to be idle down because y values go down, add animation idle up. Okay, so we have this grid, let me just double check. Um, okay, oh, we want discrete values, there we go, that was, that's why I was tweaking. Okay, so you'll notice that as I move this cursor around, the, the animation changes. So depending on the value of this blend position for idle in the parameters of this animation tree, our animation is going to change. So these values look extremely similar to these values, and so we're just going to pass this input vector as the current animation that should be played in the animation tree. So let's do that in the script. 
So we'll go animation tree dot set parameters slash idle slash blend position to be the velocity. And here's what that looks like. So we get some directionality, but when I let go, the sprite goes back. And that's because we're recording a value for the blend position to be zero when we're not moving. But what we would rather have is we'd rather have the value freeze after we stop moving and maintain the direction that we were facing when we were moving. So in other words, we don't want to set this when our vector is zero because we want to be continuing to face the direction that we were in while we were moving. So if the velocity is zero, then we do not want to set anything. And in other cases, if we're moving, then we move and we set this. And here's what that looks like. So I hit right, I let go, and we're still facing that direction. So that's good. So we're almost there. We just need to add the walk animation. So we're not just in idle all the time. So I'll close this, come back to root, right click, add a new blend space. This is going to be walk. And it's going to be pretty similar to the last one. So we'll go ahead and edit, add point, walk left, walk right, walk up, and walk down. And if you want to see what that looks like, just hit play. And in the editor, move the blend, the blend space around, set this to discrete. OK, cool. And this also represents a new blend position that we're also going to need to update. OK, so oh, and let's go back to root and make sure that we are allowed to transition between these states by adding some transitions between them. OK, so come back to the script and make sure that we update the second blend position for walk. And now we need to tell the animation tree what, what state we're in, whether it's idle or walk. So when our velocity is zero, we're going to be in the walk state. So you get the parameter slash playback, and you travel to idle. Otherwise, we're going to do the same, but make sure we're in walk. Here's what that looks like. So it seems to be working um, pretty good. So one, one last thing I, I want to touch on is when we go at an angle, it's using the side animation right now. But let's say you wanted it to pick the down or the up instead when we're going at an angle. I'll show you how to do that. So come into animation tree, come into walk, and just extend the bounds to whatever you want. So set these to 0.1, so they extend a little bit more outwards. And then using the mouse cursor, you can extend these out a little bit, and you'll get a different um, frame for when you're going at an angle, depending on what you want. And if you wanted it to always be side, then you would extend these ones out and put these ones back. Cool. Thanks for watching.